Welcome back guys. Today's video is going to be a little bit more of my crypto 101 stuff. I've had people ask me, hey, my friends and family want to buy Bitcoin. Um, I don't have the time to explain to them how to do it. It'd be really helpful if you made some short walkthrough videos just to explain. So that's my plan for today. Um, I recommend using Coinbase um, to purchase it, but that's because you get it instantly um, and you can move it right away. With Gemini, which I like purchasing on more just because the fees are lower, once you buy it, you can't move it off the website until your transaction clears, which could be like four or five days. But with Coinbase, you can move it instantly to GDAX if you want to trade, which is their trading platform. Um, it works very, very well with Coinbase because it's run by Coinbase. Or you can move it to a wallet or whatever you want. Um, and that's why Coinbase is a little bit better because it's instant. Um, so you'll link up your debit card with it, basically, to your account. Let's go to Coinbase. So you want to make an account, obviously. And then from there, you want to go to buy, sell. This is your, all the things that are listed that are available to be purchased instantly. The prices are going to be usually a little higher here than they are um, if you're looking like something like TradingView, which is, you know, looking at charts and getting instant prices. The, because I'm guessing there's a little bit of a premium on it and because it's instant, so you can purchase any of these available here. And I would suggest for your payment method, linking your debit card. Um, as you can see, here it's going to be instant, which is nice, and that means that you can obviously move immediately, do whatever you want with it immediately. Um, my weekly card limit's really high, but that's just because I've been buying stuff for over a year now. When you start out, I think the first weekly limit is like 2000 So you can either put um, a USD amount that you want to put if you've got 50 bucks to throw in, 25 bucks, whatever, and then you could also put a Bitcoin amount. So if you wanted to buy a quarter of a Bitcoin, a half a Bitcoin, whatever. And then from there, when you buy instantly, you will see that it's going to go to your dashboard. I buy a little Ethereum to show you guys just so that you have a demonstration. So you'd go here, make sure it's on your debit card. Um, again, because if it's on your bank, it's going to take longer. The debit card's instant. We'll do $50, buy Ethereum instantly. You also have the option to do repeat this buy. So if you want to do something like dollar cost averaging, where it just auto buys for you weekly, whatever, you can do that too. Um, as you can see here, it's going to say available instantly. Deposit to ETH wallet. So let's do this. Confirm your transaction, yes. And you can see there's a Coinbase fee. Um, you know, again, there's really no way around that. I should reiterate, there's really no way around that if you want it instantly. There's ways around it if you want to wait a couple days. So you go to view dashboard. You can see here, bought Ethereum, right? My portfolio. ETH is 100% because that's all that's on my Coinbase right now. And $47 because that's what it's worth now with the fee and it probably drops a little. So from that point, if you want to move it, because I suggest not ever leaving any cryptocurrency on an exchange. It's not a great idea. Stuff can get lost, stolen, hacked, whatever. So go to accounts and you're going to see here ETH wallet. It's got an amount. So whether you want to send it to Bittrex, if you want to send it to Bittrex, which is where you can go to trade it against other cryptocurrencies, other altcoins, open it up, go to your account, right? I'm going to use Bittrex as the demonstration because it's the one that I use the most. And as far as um, workflow goes or order goes and purchasing things, the steps are going to be exactly the same. The websites are just going to look different. So you're going to go to your account balances, type in ETH. It's going to bring up Ethereum and you see there's a plus sign, right? So you hit the plus sign. And it's going to show you an address. Now, what this is, is an address to deposit. There's two different addresses associated with crypto um, balances or crypto accounts. There's a public address and there's a private key. Um, the public address is stuff that you can give out so that people can send you money or you can move funds around in between your own accounts. And then a private key is essentially, think of it like a password. It's a password for your account. So if you give someone your private key to your Ethereum, it's like giving someone the password to your bank account. They're going to get in, they have access, they can move stuff around and take stuff. So private keys, the name gives it away, they should be private. And then the public addresses are what you're going to use to move stuff. So if I have just bought that, that, that uh, Ethereum and I wanted to send it over here, you're going to copy this, go back over to Coinbase, send Ethereum, Enter the ETH address. So the ETH address is what we just copied. You're going to put that here. You press send max. It's going to send the most, and then it'll give you the USD balance of what it's worth. As you can see, it's dropping more as I'm doing this video. And also, there's another network fee. Press continue. 
And then after however many minutes it takes for the Ethereum network to uh, do its job, you would close this out. It would show up in pending deposits here. As you can see, I have pre-existing ones down here. Show up in pending deposits, and then eventually it'll show up in your available balance. Now, if you want to send it to a, um, a wallet, I use Exodus as my desktop wallet. I use it because I like that it holds a lot of stuff. Um, but I have since purchased a Ledger Nano S, and I use that um, pretty much indefinitely. I have just about everything that it will hold on there. I gives me makes me feel more comfortable that it's hidden and safe, and that I know where everything is. I have access to it. It's also kind of convenient if I want to travel that I can bring it with me. Okay. So Exodus has a lot of available cryptocurrencies. As you can see, it says show hide. So I've hidden the ones that kind of are relevant for me that I'm not going to hold on this wallet or I don't have at all. My portfolio holds only Decred right now because it doesn't go on my ledger. But here, so if you go under Ethereum, you're going to press receive. And this is going to be your public address. So this is the address that you, again, would like to copy here. You go back to Coinbase for ETH. You'd enter the address. Now, in the beginning, what I suggest you do is compare and contrast. Where's Exodus? There it is. So bring it back up and look at the digits and, and just double check to make sure that it is the right address because there has been times where I've been running around and I've been transferring things and I'm copying and pasting addresses and you know your finger slips and maybe you think you hit copy but you don't and you've still got something on the clipboard from before. So just slow down a little bit and look because it's very important that you have the right address because if you don't, you're not gonna be receiving what you send and that would be a bummer. So you send that, so on and so forth. Um, and then the, what I actually had to look up for this video, because I knew it was possible to do this, but I wasn't sure how, is private keys. So a lot of people complain, oh, um, you know, with Exodus, you don't have access to your private keys or, um, you know, it's not as secure. Well, you can get access to your private keys on Exodus. You're going to go to Exodus, Developer, Assets, and then under Assets is everything that you're going to need. Um, also, under Ethereum Tokens, these are the ERC20 tokens, meaning they run on the Ethereum network, but they are the ones that are on the Exodus wallet. They just don't have their own listing. So for ETH, where am I? You're going to go here, export private keys. Are you sure you want to export your private keys for Ethereum? Remember to keep your private keys safe. Yes, we went over this. I'm sure. Success. So then you go to where it's exported, and you can open up the file. And it explains to you that there's address, path, balance, and private key. So this first number is going to be the address to that account. The path, my balance is zero, but in theory, I should have $46 worth of Ethereum in here if I had sent it to myself. And then this is the private key. So this is what you want to be cautious of that nobody gets, because this is, again, the password to your account, essentially, and anybody can take that and steal from you, unfortunately. So. That is for just moving Ethereum um, and moving it to Bitrix or moving it to different wallets. Uh, going forward, I will do a little bit more advanced stuff, but for now, uh, I think that covers it. Thank you for watching, guys.